Hi everyone, in this lecture I'm going to introduce you to HTML and CSS and we are going to get the setup out of the way. So what is HTML? What is CSS? HTML in simple terms it defines the content for our web pages and CSS provides the styling for that content. So what you are going to do first is go to code.visualstudio.com and when you come to this page you're going to see some sort of a web page in front of you. Now this Visual Studio code is going to be the software that we are going to use to write HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, whatever. So this tutorial series is focused on HTML and CSS and that is exactly what we are going to do with Visual Studio code. Now, uh, as like with any other thing that you want to do on your computer, you need some sort of environment for that. So if you want to write something, you need a Microsoft Word document. If you want to calculate something, you're going to need an Excel spreadsheet. The same goes for HTML and CSS. If you want to implement these technologies, you're going to need some sort of environment. And this VS Code, believe me, it is the best that you're going to get. So. Uh, enough with the VS Code, let's dive into really taking a look at what HTML is and what CSS is. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It defines or it constructs the content for our web pages. So what do I mean by content? Now, whenever you see text, you see links, you see paragraphs, most of the images, uh, these are HTML. So you write the content for the HTML inside your HTML file. The content for the web page goes inside the HTML file. Think of it as whenever you start writing like a topic on your Microsoft Word software, you just write it there and you don't provide it any styling like any paragraph justification, like any font size or anything like that. That is CSS. So if you provide line height or uh, paragraph justification or font size or line spacing, whatever you do, that is CSS. The same goes for HTML and CSS as well. So CSS stands for cascading style sheets. It means whenever you have content and you don't want it to look ugly, you're going to use CSS. That is as simple as it is. So uh, where does the HTML, where do the HTML and CSS lie for a website? So whenever you go to any website and you right click, just go ahead and right click and you go to inspect, you're going to see the HTML and the CSS for that website. Now, so far we know what HTML is, what is its job, and we know what CSS is on what it, what CSS is supposed to do. Now, Keep in mind, whenever you want to get started with web development, you need to master HTML and CSS. And these two technologies, they go hand in hand. So you can't have one without the other. You can't just style something when you don't have any content. You need something upon which the styles will be applied. So the same goes for HTML as well. If you have HTML, you need to style it so it is better readable. Maybe you want to increase the font size. Maybe you want to change the font family. Whatever that is, you need to style it. So these two technologies, they are inseparable. Now, again, we are going to use VS Code to implement HTML and CSS to write our HTML and CSS. And uh, the browser's job, like, v like Chrome or Firefox or Safari or Microsoft Edge or whatever it is that you want to use, its job is to render our HTML and CSS to the user. So, how does this process work uh, in its totality? How, how do we grab HTML and CSS and we convert it to a beautiful website? Now, let me show to you how this actually happens. Now, uh, again, open up your browser, whichever browser it is, whether it is Chrome, you need to have it installed. Of course, I'm sure you have a browser because it is your browser that has YouTube on it and through YouTube you're watching me. So you are using some sort of browser, right? So just go ahead and go to this visualstudio.code.visualstudio.com. It could be any other website. Uh, the reason that I've brought you here is this is actually the software that we are going to use. We are going to use and we are going to install towards the end of this lecture. So first off, go ahead and right click, go to inspect. This is the same option for Chrome, Firefox, 
So uh, whenever you come here, this is there, there is just a ton of information. And if this is your very first time, this is going to definitely overwhelm you. You don't need to worry. We are going to cover, if not most of these, if not. So on the left side, where you can see my cursor, this is HTML. And on the right side, we have the CSS for that specific HTML that we have selected. So if I select this one, the CSS is going to change. The styles are going to change. If I select this one, you can see how this right-hand side, it changes depending on the element. So what does that mean? It means that every element has a specific set of styles or designs that we want to apply on it, right? So keep that in mind. Now, you can see that there are a ton of HTML elements in here, and if you just go ahead and collapse them, you're going to get more and more and more, and it, it's, it looks like a never-ending cycle, and that is exactly what it is. So the bigger your website, the more HTML you're going to have. The shorter or smaller your website, the less HTML you're going to have. So an HTML is actually an HTML document, and that is the root element. Now, you need to keep this in mind that we have for HTML, we have HTML elements, and for CSS, we have properties. So HTML elements, and we have CSS properties. Now, whenever we write HTML element, well, to us as developers, it's, it makes sense. But to the end user, right, like this one, like um, let's take a look at this element. This is a div w that has a class. I mean, it is completely gibberish. No one is going to understand it unless they have studied web development. Now, what is, what is the job of the browser? The job of the browser is to convert this div into some sort of content that can be read easily by the user. That's as simple as it is. So that's it. We write HTML elements, and then we apply some styles on those elements, and then we say, okay, grab these elements along with their styles browser and then show something beautiful on the screen. Now, how does the browser interpret this? That is actually the job of the browser. Browser is going to grab our elements and it is going to convert them into content and it is going to show it to the user. So uh, let's say, let's grab this content. Let's see what kind of element actually has this content. It says code editing redefined. So the way that you can select different um, items on your screen is you can see this pointer right here. You just click on it and you come here and you're going to click on this one. And it is going to take you there exactly. So we can see that this is an H1 and H1 stands for a heading, heading number one. So this is a heading, right? And when I click on it, you can see the content. It says code editing. And then within the strong element, which is going to emphasize on that specific content, which is inside of it, it says redefine. Now, don't worry about the syntax, this H1. What is this H1? What is this uh, uh, opening bracket, closing uh, uh, bra angle bracket? Don't worry about any of these. We are going to talk about them in our next lecture. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to explain to you what the syntax of HTML actually means. And we are going to, by the end of this series, this tutorial series, when you create three beautiful websites, you will be a master of HTML and CSS. So don't worry about it. We just want to understand how the pieces come together. So HTML, then styles on top of that, and then the browser is going to grab all those, style, uh, all those styles and elements, and it is going to convert it into something that the user can read. So this is an H1, and it says code editing redefined. So if you show this to the user, the user will have no idea what is an H1, what is the strong element. What are these? But the browser, it is going to take away oh, this, the, the uh, um, difficulty out of this code, and it is just going to show the user the content. So, And we can also see what styles are applied on this H1. So we can see we have a font size. So the, is the size of the font is 5 rem. And there, we also have the color, which is inherit. We are going to talk about all of this, so don't worry about it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. 
Now, ideally for HTML and CSS development, it is, again, it is ideal to use Firefox. But I'm gonna get started with Chrome because that is the, the most used browser. And then when we get to our amazing uh, lectures of this series, we are gonna switch to Firefox Developer Edition. Don't worry about it. Now, now that we are done with the introduction of HTML and CSS, it is time to go ahead and to install this VS Code. Now, my machine is a Windows machine, so by default, it is going to grab this, it's gonna say download for Windows. So whenever you come to this website and you just go ahead and open it, it typically it should detect your OS, your operating system. And in case it doesn't detect it, you can just click on this arrow and it is going to say you, can, you want it for Mac, Windows, or Linux. And go ahead, download it. It's a very light software. It is free, it is open source. That is the good thing about this. You don't need to pay a dime for this. You can use it indefinitely, forever. Now go ahead, uh, download it, install it. It's very, it, it has a very simple wizard, installation wizard, and you can just go ahead and complete it. After you have installed it, now how are you going to use this VS Code? Now, you need some sort of a folder, a root directory, upon which this VS Code is going to open. So you can't just go ahead and open it in thin air, upon thin air. So you need to have an anchor point, somewhere where the VS Code files will be saved. So this is the resource files for this tutorial series. The links to this resource files, it is in the description of every video of this tutorial series. So you can just go ahead and grab it and all of the lectures, they're actually there along with the website projects. So what you're going to do after VS Code is installed, it's gonna just go ahead and pop up. Just go ahead and close it, and you're gonna come here, right click, and just say open with code. Now, when you say open with code, you're gonna see this page. Some sort of something like this. Uh, I have a different theme, color theme for this one. Yours might be the, if, if this is the first time that you're using VS Code, it is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be like the uh, original theme of VS Code. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how it looks. What matters is what it does. So this is the interface of VS Code. Uh, this is the getting started page. I'm just going to go ahead and close it. Uh, this is the explorer where we are going to create our files and folders. We are, going, we are not going to use these three. Um, and in here, I'm just going to show you uh, which um, extensions to use. Now, VS Code extensions, they allow us to write code better and to write code faster. The first extension that you need to uh, install is going to be Live Server. Now, whenever you're writing HTML, you want to see that HTML in the browser. So you know, okay, what, what is missing, what should I add, or what should I rectify? Now this live server is going to change is going to show all the changes that you uh, all the code that you write and it's going to change that or show it in the browser instantly when you just say control s or save the document all the changes will be reflected in the uh, browser and you can see that here is a demo of that whenever you write html you click save it's going to show that instantly in the browser you don't need to go ahead and reload the browser every time it's going to take too much time, believe me. So in here, instead of the disable button, you're going to see uh, a button that is going to say install. Just go ahead and click on it. And these are for those of you who have no idea what VS Code is and you have never used it. Uh, don't worry if this is like a lot. Uh, we are going to dissect it throughout this tutorial series. This is the first extension, Live Server. The name says it. And you can, when you click on it, you can read more about it. Uh, everything is right here. You can just go ahead and read all the features, how you can install it and all that. The second extension is going to be Prettier, uh, Code Formatter. This is going to format our code uh, in the best possible way. Now, when you're getting started with these technologies, you have no idea, okay, uh, how should I write something, uh, whether the code that I've written uh, does it follow best practices? Where should I provide spaces? Where should I provide commas? And all that stuff. This extension is going to simplify that process for you. You don't have to worry when you, when you have this extension, extension installed. You don't have to worry about 
uh, how your code looks or whether or not there are spaces, where are the comments, nothing. This extension is going to take care of all of that. And even though you have written your very first line of code, this is going to display it as though you have been coding for the past 10 years. So again, instead of this disable, you're gonna see install, just go ahead and click on it. It might ask you to uh, restart VS Code, just go ahead and restart it and that's it. So, uh, we, are, uh, we are done with this lecture. I did not intend on this to be 15 minutes again. In our next lecture, we're going to uh, start talking about HTML. So see you then.